started. Okay, so a lot of people asking about the knowledge drive access. So uh, I will I will share the link uh, in email, or uh, I will put a link directly here. So let me put directly in the chat window itself. So I'm pasting knowledge drive uh, link in chat window and you can copy from there and bookmark it. So knowledge drive is the shared drive, so shared Google drive we have uh, where we collected all the documents contributed by different team members and all these are available for you to use. Uh, these are different type of documents could be like white paper to technical code to some user guide or student guide. So hope these are useful for uh, all of you. Okay. Okay, so let me take a question uh, first. Okay, so let me take a question. So question is for a regular person, what is the difference between SaaS and PaaS? So my opinion is when we consider a SaaS, SaaS is a you can think of any business software which available through internet or through regular subscription. So where if it is free uh, like Gmail or Facebook, those are SaaS applications or uh, any software uh, where you pay money uh, through online, that is SaaS application. So software as a service, so business uh, application as a service. Now PaaS. So PaaS is platform as a service, that is a full name. So platform as a service means you providing a platform, uh, it's kind of development platform or any kind of platform to develop new applications, new software, new services. So that will be cons uh, called as PaaS. So it could be uh, Oracle can provide uh, PaaS platform or Google can provide or AWS, which is American Wave, uh, Amazon Web Services is an example of PaaS. Facebook uh, services are PaaS. So each, each of these uh, big uh, companies, they provide infrastructures uh, that can be used to develop new application, new software using uh, their infrastructure. So that is called PaaS. So that is uh, my answer uh, and for regular people if they can understand from that. I will not go in technical uh, more than this. So, uh, so SOA is service, or service oriented architecture, that is full name and uh, I need somebody who can give idea what is SOA because I am not uh, that much technical to answer what is SOA. Next question is whether it is AR or AP netting functionality is available in release 13. Yes, it is available. Uh, whether it is complete uh, netting functionality, uh, I am not sure, but it is available. What is smart receipt functionality in release 13? Uh, I have not used this functionality, so I will not comment on this. But I will check and come back on this. Uh, knowledge access drive. Knowledge drive access I already given in chat window. You can copy from there. Let's see. Yeah, Nagra, you joined. So can you speak now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, hi. Am I audible? Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, sorry, everybody. Uh, sorry for the confusion. Yeah. Uh, so if you can hear Nagraj's voice, please type here yes to chat window so we know that you can hear his voice. Nagraj, can you give us your introduction and then uh, maybe take up any of these questions which you see on the screen? Yeah. 
दिस इज नागराज यार सो आई मै ऑडिबल नाव हेलो या यू आर ऑडिबल यस गो ओके Yeah, I can take up the uh, first question. I think I um, heard the answer given by Shiv. Uh, it is uh, correct, but I just wanted to add uh, something to it. Like you know, the pass is like a platform as a service. If you are giving, um, it basically means that the database or like you know, the Oracle or a SQL SQL Server database or a DB2 database. If it is like um, uh, is a cloud-enabled database or something like that, then you can call the um, uh, database functions itself as a service, like an API that you want to call. And suppose you want to process some uh, data, um, and you don't want to uh, you know host a complete database on your machine, then you could want to select based on something, or you want results in a specific format. You could just call the API of the Oracle database. Which you have, you know, uh, taken as a if you have taken as it as a service, and it will results give you the results in a specific way that you have designed it. So you don't need to uh, install any database on any machine or any other, um, uh, you know, laptop or or a desktop or a server. Uh, so you could just call the service, uh, the Oracle itself, Oracle SQL execution itself as a service, and then you can use the results. It is basically mainly used in uh, data analysis and you know data analytics in uh, startup companies where they don't uh, have enough uh, budget to you know completely purchase the database on their own. I hope that makes sense. So there is one more uh, term called infrastructure as a service. So where you could actually buy some infrastructure, some computation uh, infrastructures like you know some machine with so much of RAM. And so much of uh, hard disk, and then it basically allows you to your VMware device, where you can go and do whatever uh, processing you want on that machine. It will be allocated to you for that specific period of time when you have, when you have purchased that as a service. So you can go and extend it whenever you want, or you can just uh, you know uh, end it whenever you like it. So SOA is one. Um, so, so is a, like a service-oriented architecture itself. So, all these things have been, if they have been designed on that architecture or you know based on that SOA principles, then you can enable any of these SaaS, PaaS, or IaaS or service. Nowadays, we are getting one more new term called engineer engineer as SOA as a service, EaaS, uh, EaaS, let's like say engineer as service. So, you could just subscribe to a Engineer for some period of time, and then you can, you know, when you are done with that engineer, you can, you can just shut down the service or something like that. <coughs> so, I yeah, hope that I hope that makes sense. So, I'll take up that one more question on that flex field in the BI publisher. Uh, flex field basically means that uh, when you are trying to use this any of these services, you don't know what is the result is going to be uh, when it comes back as a service. So that uh, initially, when we uh, when the BI reports were designed, they were like having a connecting to a specific database, and the results were known. The query will give you a specific result is what is expected, and the reports were being designed. But with now, um, you know, emerging uh, cloud technologies uh, and everything being a service. Uh, in that idea, you don't know what is going to be your output when you give the input as a SQL, right? So if you define the field as a flex field, then you could uh, whatever the result is, you can get it back. You can do a further processing based on that field format, and then you could show the results in your reports. Um, and Nagraj, can you take this question? What is OICS, Oracle Integration Cloud Services? Yeah, yeah. So that's a very good product, or I mean, very interesting product that Oracle has come up with. So yeah, quote unquote, you can't quote me on any of these things. So I'm just <laughs> trying to give you some information on this one. So I'm not an official sales person or you know uh, any other person who is you know. Uh, so you can't. Hold hold me for any legal issues. I'm just uh, uh, making it clear. But yeah, so Oracle Integration Cloud really means that. Um, so now we have a lot of software, uh, you know, service vendors like 
service now or uh, salesforce.com or even cloud um, in the cloud itself we have lots of uh, oracle cloud itself we have lots of uh, so you know services as a software or, or the product as a service is coming up right so now that is going to be very severe where you want to uh, integrate any uh, two of your services or the the background of uh, creating such a product is that there are no going to be no customization on your product anymore once it is in cloud so on premises you could go and customize however you want and then you could use it but in the cloud there is no customization right so you have to find out a right kind of software for you that you want to you want and then you could try to integrate with your another cloud product so, so for example if you are having oracle cloud fscm and you want uh, a little part of uh, uh, cloud hcm from some other uh, product or crm from other product right so then you can't say that i want that crm product with the cloud product right you just have to integrate in these two conditions so for example if you want to cl integrate cloud fscm with salesforce crm right <coughs> so oracle has um, come up with this product where it is pre configured the integration points are pre configured um so if you it's basically a drag and drop kind of uh, uh, scenario where uh, they have given some uh, you know integration points already with, available so once you drag and drop and ask them to con integrate uh, you know run that back end process they the both the databases get connected and then you have to write your apis on top of that so that you are able to transfer the data between them it is also very useful in on premises products uh, so if you have a on premises product and you want to integrate with a cloud product so basically transfer the data from uh, the uh, uh, on premises product to cloud product then that's where you could use this uh, integration um, software package as well i hope that answers that question yes very much uh, and uh, next question is is there any tool from oracle ebs R12 to Fusion to migrate all the objects like form report packages. Uh, yeah, I am not sure about that uh, because Fusion was originally a on-premises product, and EBS R2 was also, a, as far as I know, uh, it was also an uh, on-premises. So I, I don't know if there is any tool that can migrate. and yeah. and what i feel is both were developed on same uh, technologies so it basically copy paste would, would do a major of things in that case if i am not wrong yeah. okay so let me give answer to this uh, so right now there is no tool or certified tool available in market uh, for ebs ql to fusion migration Mm. uh there are some companies who are claiming that they can migrate chart of account or they can migrate master data to an extent uh they can clean data and um, massage data and move to cloud but it is not full fledged product uh recently oracle also announced that uh, they will be coming up with uh, a service or product called soar that will be if, uh, using that customer will able to upgrade from oracle ebs or people soft to fusion or to cloud so but uh, i don't think anybody has used that tool from oracle yet so it's very difficult to say so my answer is right now there is no tool uh, where we can migrate and uh, other thing is uh, the reports or packages or forms that has been developed in ebs are not usable anyway in in fusion because they develop in a totally different technologies and what fusion is use is totally different technology so architecture wise it's not compatible even if some company plan to do they they have uh, bits and pieces here and there so right now there is no straight approach uh, for that next question how can i access cloud instance for practice so nagraj you have any idea on this okay Yeah, you, yeah if you have you are on so any cloud is like you know if you are specific on aws or azure 
or Oracle Cloud. All these companies are offering their cloud services one month for free when you join. So yeah, you could try in for one month, and then you could uh, you know you could try all three of them. So yeah. And other thing is, uh, if I if I give idea I on this, yeah. So so any company who are gold member or above, they are getting uh, Oracle Cloud Environment Access or uh, Demo Environment yeah. Access. Yeah. Now it is up to the company's uh, you know senior leadership whether they are passing those login credentials to everybody in company or selected people in a company or only specific people in a company. So what I hear is. Most of the time, uh, those companies' leaderships keep those passwords uh, to only certain people. That's why most of the people in company not having an uh, environment to practice. And <coughs> passwords keep changing every week, I think every week or every fortnight. So that is the reason that even if somebody get password one time, they may not get a password you know, after two weeks. But most of the companies, most of the partner companies have access to at least two or three demo, demo environment from Oracle uh, partner network. So I would suggest if you are uh, working in a company who is Oracle partner, talk to your uh, manager or supervisor and ask them you are interested in uh, you know practicing or learning cloud and if they can help you to provide that demo environment uh, login password. Because that is the only way you can uh, get access. Uh, there is no other way to have any environment for that. Uh, next question is how can I how can our EBS supply chain management functional consultant it started his career in SCM cloud and what are the initial steps to be taken? Okay, Nagraj, can you help in this if you have idea how people can migrate <laughs> yeah. from EBS yeah. to? Uh. Yeah, uh, so cloud itself is a, a CM cloud or any cloud for that matter, it's completely different tech stack. So, uh, so EBS SCM functional consultant uh, and you want to start your career in SCM as a functional if I hope, then uh, there will be not much change in terms of functionality. The business processes are still going to be the same. So. Um, so yeah, there, there's not much difference. That's what I feel. If you have understood the basic business processes uh, in SCM, then uh, yeah. So there will be a little bit here and change, here and there change. Some navigation, some tech, some functional terms might differ in in cloud, but the overall business process is is like every uh, product is designed to support some business process. And not the technology or the uh, infrastructure. So, yeah, if you know, uh, being a functional consultant, if you know the business process well, then um, I think there are all lots of training uh, videos available. If you are partner of Oracle or something, or if you are even partner of uh, um, any other company who is offering a CM products, then there are definitely some good, very good training videos that are available. Um, and there is even certifications that are available if you want to go the functional route. So the, but the technical route is completely different. Um, so you have to go through a lot of pain uh, to uh, read all those uh, new technologies, um, new technical uh, stacks. But yeah, going forward, business is being in cloud. Um, the and there is no uh, option of uh, customization. Uh, then there is no need to learn those uh, technological aspects as well because basically you'll not be given access to uh, do any uh, you know certifications or you know even work on the product anymore. So it will all be managed by the uh, Oracle or, or the whoever is the vendor, software vendor himself. Yeah. And my uh, two cents on this, uh, like how to move from EBS to cloud or people soft to cloud, uh, just wait because the moment your company will get uh, enough project, they will move people from EBS or people soft to cloud. So it is just your company's uh, you know, future plans and how they are taking a cloud uh, business. Uh, if you are, um, if you don't want to wait, then my session is uh, in, in market, you can start applying in, uh, in a in a company where they have a supply chain cloud product and you can join uh, those companies. These are the only way. 
you need not to attend any training because uh, training wise both both tools are uh, very much same in terms of functionality it would be just a ramp up period like uh, maybe three to four weeks which anyway you know you, you would be learning uh, through initial ramp up but uh, just wait within your company or uh, switch company to join a company where you know there are some cloud costs. Okay, next question is what is significance of SOA tool infusion? So Nagraj, uh, this is technical. Do you have any opinion yeah, on this? Yeah, so yeah. SOA I think is more of an architecture. It's like service oriented architecture. So if if a tool, the, the SOA tool or service oriented uh, you know, uh, there was one product from Oracle uh, Fusion, which which basically uh, give you the details of the APIs uh, of the Fusion tool, or the or the Fusion product. So that's how I think you could use that tool to uh, if you want to integrate with uh, with any other uh, product that is there in the market, uh, or even with the uh, with the uh, on-premises product, or even with the uh, other. Uh, on premises products where, that were there. But I think we are mostly we have discontinued that tool if I am not wrong. But yeah, I think uh, that that's the uh, most of it actually. Yeah. It was basically used to uh, connect to other databases and extract the data basically for analytics or any other. Yeah, sorry, go ahead, Chief. So all the wave services which currently use are kind of SOA, right? Those are SOA services? Yeah. Yeah, all all fusion uh, uh, products are, are are built on SOA, so they are all SOA enabled uh, services. Okay. Next question is how can we see record history in cloud? So uh, I think uh, in last one year or half, uh, Oracle bring these functionalities where uh, I think most of the transactional screens are having this feature. Uh, so this feature is available under View and view and you will have about this record uh, option and about this record will show record history so i think you are talking about that right like when this record is got created and last update or last update by so if you link that information that information is there on the each transaction screen if you're looking some sort of auditing information like uh, you know what was the previous values and what is the new values then Oracle have that audit feature and you can turn on that audit feature on screen by screen or field by field and you can capture auditing information. So that is a separate uh, feature there and that can be just uh, enable or turn on uh, on a specific screen or a specific field. Uh, next question is can R13 Fusion ERP be licensed and installed on premise? Uh, Nagraj your take on this? Can we license or install release mm -hmm. 13 on I think, yeah, see, going forward, all all Oracle products um, are are cloud first, and then uh, the on-premises version will be released later. So I think you you have to wait a little bit uh, once it is released, like uh, one or two months, if I am not wrong, and then you could uh, get the uh, so Fusion is basically on-premises product. You can you can definitely do it if I'm if I'm right if I know okay. it correctly. So here is my thing. Uh, first of all, uh, you know I would like to take this opportunity to tell everybody that uh, for last four year Oracle is not using term fusion. For last four year they yeah. just using yeah. word cloud because until release nine they were using a fusion word, but from ten onward they call it calling it cloud. So fusion is like when this, everything was available on premise, but the moment it is available on cloud, Oracle calling it cloud. So my, so if I take question this way, can R13 cloud ERP be licensed and installed on premise? So answer is uh, generally no. Oracle is not giving any on premise installation CD or any kind of uh, support to do on premise, but. Oracle is giving exceptions only for a very large big customers uh, because Oracle bringing a new program called cloud at customers. So Oracle saying that we will we will bring our server, we will put their ser our server in your data center, but it will be managed by us. So it would be like a half uh, on-premise but half managed by Oracle, so kind of an arrangement that Oracle is doing. So Oracle having some uh, customer where Oracle is giving server directly in their premise, but 
still managed by Oracle. But for a regular customer, a small customer, or medium sized customer, that option is, in, is not given. Now, the next question how to set dash dashboard prompt value from URL parameter in Oracle Analytics? Nagra, do you have any idea on Oracle Analytics? Yeah. No, okay. no sorry. Sure. No. No. Okay. So I will pass this question because I also don't have knowledge in analytics. But I will make sure I will get somebody to answer this question and I post in Facebook group. Okay, next question is what is implementation strategy for Fusion compared to EBS? Okay. So again, uh, uh, friends, I would suggest to start use word cloud ERP or cloud in general rather than calling it Fusion because that would make your thought process also clear that it is a cloud, not uh, fusion. Okay, coming to what is implementation strategy. So when it comes to any RP project, whether it is EBS, PeopleSoft, or Oracle, or SAP, the strategy comes from the customer side, depend on uh, customer's uh, initiative, customer purpose, customer's intention, and based on that, everything's outlined. Oracle, Cloud is just a one ERP product, so it will go again same kind of phases where it would be like you know requirement gathering or design testing, uh, multiple round of testing, deployment, production move, transition support. It would go on all phases. So implementation strategy for cloud per se it's not very different than EBS or anything because it's a larger uh, ERP pro project rather than a product implementation. The only thing is because it's a new product, it has much more features in terms of uh, making it easier to use. So it gives some tools or uh, some features uh, so that it makes easier for each phase to get it complete faster. That is the only thing. But strategy wise, it is very much same. Each company who take initiative, they, they consider all their uh, uh, in business parameters in terms of implementation strategy. Uh, next question is, is it possible to create custom? Uh, Shiv, uh, just, uh, just, uh, yeah. just like to add something to that. So the one more strategy or, you know, what, what's going on right now is like, you know, if you have a on-premises product like EBS and if you have a cloud product in, in, then there are two things like, you know, either you do a lift and shift where you actually do a painful task of identifying the records, fields, uh, you know, are the, uh, the tables, um, uh, and then you uh, map the tables between those two, and then you do the transfer of data, or you just try to create some integration points between them so that the data is uh, transferred automatically. So, if you are asking that kind of strategy, I think the most preferred is the integration strategy. Um, uh, so, because uh, lift and shift is, is a very painful task and it, it's time consuming. But integration is as you once you set up for a sample record and if you access that, you know, uh, if you assess it and then if you are comfortable with that, the data that is getting transferred, and if you are fine with that, then you could just go and run it for the rest of the uh, uh, rows of data that you have in those records. So I hope that that makes much more sense in terms of strategy. Yes. Okay, next question is, is it possible to create custom subject area in cloud? Uh, Nagra, do you have uh, any opinion on this in terms of reporting? Um, yeah, sorry, I, I didn't understand the term custom subject area. Uh, so by that I mean like if you want to create some extra pages or some extra functionality in the cloud, no, it's not possible. Uh, okay, so it so has to be an announcement request to Oracle. This is related to OTBI. Oracle Transactional uh, Business Intelligence area. Uh, I don't think it's possible, but uh, I am not tech that much technical, so I I will take these questions uh, with some expert later on. Next question is difference between ADFDI and FBDI. Nagarat, can you give your thought on this? Yeah, yeah. ADF, ADF, I know. Uh, but I don't know what is that FBDI. Okay, let me answer somebody this. Please yeah, yeah, let me answer this. So the, the difference is uh, both are spreadsheet based tools. Uh, ADFDI is a tool which works when we log in directly in Oracle. So through Excel plugin, 
we directly connect with Oracle and we have options to upload data online. Where FBDI is an offline tool where it provides a sort of template and we fill those template and generate a CSV file end of the end of our task and then we upload those straight uh, CSV files into Oracle UCM and then load in uh, tables or interface uh, or screens. So ADFDI is a kind of online tool for Excel and FBDI is an offline tool uh, for Excel. So that is the difference. I mean, uh, any limitations in both the cases? Any limitations in the sense of data volume, volume size? Yes, definitely because uh, ADFDI is an online tool so it have a more validation. It can do online validation, so it check all the values. Uh, it can show up uh, drop downs. It do validation, so it show error right away. Uh, but because it's a kind of macro based, uh, you know, online tool, so number of record it can process are limited to like say 5,000 max. Uh, beyond that, it will either get corrupt or will have performance issue or uh, you know some error. Uh, where FBDI is because it's offline tool, so it can process as much as you know uh, Excel can do. So it can uh, have 50,000 or millions of record, and you can still use FBDI because end of the day it would be generating CSV file. But on the downside, FBDI does not have any validation. So all the value validations or uh, real validation will be happen when you actually loading data through uh, ESS jobs. So you have to wait until you load data in Oracle and then only you come to know about error. So depend on situation, uh, if you have, if both both are available in some areas, then you have to make a choice, depend on how much data you are loading or what is the purpose that you want to use. And ADFDI is mostly uh, designed for the business user, like accountant or data entry people. Uh, where FBDI is uh, more of for the uh, IT people so that they can do conversion or integrations or some sort of back-end work. So these are the few differences between ADFDI and FBDI. Any strategy to migrate setup from one instance to another in Fusion? Uh, yes, so Oracle have this tool called uh, FSM, Functional Setup Manager, where we can create packages in one environment and uh, it gives some options how you can do to extract uh, based on specific criteria, specific areas and then you can export and later on you can import in a new environment. Uh, now because Oracle is a vast tool so it gives a lot more options and it's become a little complicated to use FSM. Uh, but uh, with some practice, with some uh, learning uh, we can use that tool. So that tool is available. Uh, whether it is useful or how to use, that is a little tricky. Uh, my question is, what is the future of Oracle Cloud? Nagra, can you take this question? <laughs> yeah, I, I can. <laughs> Sorry, I cannot answer that question being in Oracle yeah. itself. So I say it is always bright. <laughs> okay, so let me answer this so, question. So, yeah, so that's fine. So what is the future of Oracle Cloud? So future, there is no, see, Oracle Cloud, uh, think this way, you know, friends, uh, if I give my thought, uh, Oracle was having a product called Oracle 8i, Oracle 9i, or 11i, right? So that i was stand for internet, right? So when we say 11i, that means uh, Oracle 11 application enabled for internet. Now, what is cloud? So if you ask in a very generic term, what is cloud? Actually the meaning of cloud is internet. So anything you can do through internet is, is, is a cloud. So, so now it's like a I become C. That is the only thing. So all the fusion or all the Oracle products are now internet enabled. And actually they were internet enabled. That's why for last 10 years everything is internet enabled. So so my thought is that uh, it will continue and more and more uh, services, more and more automation, more and more features would be coming up in Oracle Cloud and uh, for customer it would be more um, productive uh, experience. For developer it would be more opportunity to build uh, you know, highly integrated or highly sophisticated applications faster 
so it's win-win for everyone the only thing is it's removing a uh, lot of task uh, in term of uh, in term of you know technical uh, uh, redundant so so small small tasks are getting automated so it's up to us how we want to use it but in future oracle cloud will be getting more and more and more features okay let me copy some more questions so uh, is is sql accessible is ex, uh, okay how to filter direct database query report from url parameter uh, i can't answer that question okay yeah, me neither like how okay. to filter direct database query report from url okay, next, next yeah. question is direct sql accessible available in cloud erp release date answer is yes uh, you can access uh, database or you can run sql the only thing is it's not uh, straight forward the way it used to be in uh, sql plus or uh, in a tot software this is like you have to create a kind of bi publisher data model and there you can put a uh, you can put sql and then you can generate output so it's little tricky and uh, it's not very straight forward but yes answer is yes you can uh, use sql in release 13 or any cloud erp actually even uh, earlier releases of can you okay can you give more brief on lift and shift i think nagraj you use this term lift and yeah. shift or yeah. yeah so can you give some thought yeah. what is yeah. that yeah. Uh, yeah sure sure shift so so now we have some <coughs> on premises products a people soft um fusion or uh, sorry the people of fscm and now you have oracle uh, uh, cloud uh, fscm right so now it is not a normal upgrade uh, where you could just run some upgrade or something like that and then you know you are you are all the data the transaction data that you require is you know the historical data is there in the cloud it's not going to happen because there is a huge difference between the architecture as well as the you know uh, record uh, level changes so the, uh, the primary problem that oracle was facing is this problem they don't they didn't know what to do with the data uh, you know they they wanted to migrate this so they started creating integration points so that's where this oracle integrator came into uh, uh, you know integration software which has came into the picture so now that is the one part but now you can what you can do is since you are you know the architecture of the people soft as well as the architecture of the cloud then you could go and uh, you know do a uh, one to one mapping of the records of the tables and uh, columns to the cloud and then you actually export it in the format of a excel or a dat file and then you load it in your cloud product and then uh, see whether all the data has come up or something like that so this process is basically called as lift and shift so i think work day is uh, only in a work uh, lift shift mode there is no integration uh, there is a proper integration point available with uh, with this product or you know with the work day product so i think lift and shift is what work day you coined that term that you have to do a one to one mapping with the uh, uh, with the record and fields between the two products and then uh, you move the uh, data the inefficiency is that you know some of them you could map there is uh, there will be lot more fields in on premises because it is being developed from so many years but on the cloud if it is very young product it is yet to mature then there will not be many uh, rec record level fields so you don't know what to do with that data anymore right so the extra data that you have on on the on premises products may not match with the uh, the the product in the cloud because it's still young so uh, that is the main problem uh, so I, i hope i was clear on that one yeah uh, okay similar question on the same line is any white paper available for this uh, lift and shift strategy or approach uh, yeah mm, as far as i know I've, we have not yet done because ours is basically a integration oriented uh, approach to uh, the uh, upgrade 
um, okay. so if uh, i think uh, as i said you know lift and shift was coined by workday if i am not wrong so okay. i think they would have more details on that one okay next question is how to access oracle cloud table so oracle provide documentation in term of what are the tables available in a given module and uh, then you can use oracle uh, bi publisher uh, area and you can create data model and then you can write sql and access tables through that so there is no direct access like sql plus yeah. or stored yeah. kind of connection but you can uh, use the through reporting through reporting you can create data model and generate uh, instant output uh, through uh, sql in so, ebs i said in the Sorry, uh, just to add, as I said, you know, everything is a, is a cloud service, like you know, platform as a service. So you don't have direct, like you know, a SQL developer or a Rapid SQL where you could go and connect to the database and then execute your query. I think that is not going to be possible anymore. So you have to create some integration points and then you know, send the SQL and you'll get back the results. Basically, that kind of architecture will be there. Yep. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Uh, next question in EBS, we yeah. use BR100 documentation during implementation. Is this documents we use in Fusion as well? So, in Fusion, uh, now it, it is a little different approach. Uh, in, in EBS, we uh, primarily use M methodology, and BR100 comes from M's methodology documentation. Now, in cloud, most of the company either have their own methodology or they follow Oracle uh, Unified Methodology (OUM), and Oracle also come up coming up with their own templates. So, uh, what I understand is Oracle <coughs> call uh, now the BR100 in EBS. Now it call as MC15 Cloud. So MC15 means Master Configurations uh, Number 50 is a configuration worksheet. Uh, which was very similar BR100 documentation in, in EBS side. So that is a difference. Okay, so good. So I think we are done with questions and uh, I know that uh, there were a few specific uh, technical questions that we could not take. So next time I will definitely try to have a more uh, expert who can answer in-depth uh, functional and technical questions specific to reporting or uh, specific to specific model. Uh, so I think uh, initially we thought it would be for 30 minutes, but it went for almost uh, one hour. So thanks very much uh, everybody who joined and thanks for supporting and asking questions and giving us opportunity. And very special thanks to Nagraj. He, uh, he joined uh, on a very short notice and able to answer most of our questions as well. So thank you Nagraj and thanks everybody. Yeah, no problem. And, uh, Thank I will you. Post all Thanks, questions. everybody. I will post these questions back in the Facebook group also, so everybody, so all other members also can answer these questions, so you can get a different perspective. And uh, let's see when we can plan next event, our uh, next online meetup, and we can have more further discussion on Oracle ERP in general or specific to other topics. So thank you very much, everybody. Uh, hope everybody have a good evening and. Uh, Thanks uh, for joining. I'm closing meeting Thanks now. For Thanks for joining. Thanks, uh, Thanks, Thanks everybody. everybody. Yeah.